Welcome to Relatable Situations. I'm your host, Juan, and I am joined by my very good friend, Bree. Say hello, Bree. Hey, I feel like there should be some music welcoming to the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and next we have Bree coming to the stage. Hey. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we are doing an episode uh, on Independence Day. So for those who are not uh, from America or familiar with American customs, Independence Day is a day that we celebrate the independence of the United States from uh, England. And basically it goes that, you know, um, the United States was a part of the Kingdom of England. They wanted to secede from that uh, rule and they wanted their independence. They wanted to be independent from that monarchy. However, they still wanted to maintain that relationship. So I thought that it would be a good idea to um, play on that whole idea of independence, but still being in a relationship and discuss that. As an added bonus, and for the very first time, we are doing the show not only as a traditional podcast, but also as a video podcast. So for those who have the ability, I would definitely appreciate if you're able to take a look at us on Instagram, as well as on um, YouTube, once I upload this to YouTube. And I'm going to also try to put it on Facebook as well. So the ways to reach me and the primary ways to connect with the show would be through Instagram. My um, Instagram uh, handle is relatable underscore situations underscore podcast. You can reach me on Facebook at relatable situations. And I'm pretty sure that my YouTube is also under relatable situations. So with all of that stuff out of the way, let's get into the independence within a relationship. So Bree, let me ask you a question before I get into my spiel about independence. What does the term independence mean to you as it, re as it relates to relationships? Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, what does that look like for you in a relationship? That you guys are comfortable with kind of doing your own thing and then coming back together as a unit. Okay. Okay. And, you know, I'll, I'll concur with that as well as I'll add to that. To me, what I... What I see in um, the term of independence in a relationship is I see two people who have come together, but they still have certain independent uh, factors of their life. For example, um, although you, you know, you and, and or, or me and someone are in a relationship, we still can have our separate friendships. We still can have um separate things that we do outside of our partner and you know i, I think i've mentioned to you in the, in the past brie i've been in situations one in particular where that wasn't necessarily understood in the same way um it wasn't necessarily the case where the person that i was involved with felt that okay because we're now together everything that you do needs to involve me and if <laughs> <laughs> that face you just made. <laughs> I'm forget where I'm video. Okay. Um, and it it became how do I say difficult in the relationship because you know me being um, prior to our you know that relationship an independent person um, and then basically being told that you need to make sure that I know everybody that you know and our actions need to be synchronized and I need to know where you're going. I need to know what you're doing. And more than likely, I need to be there too all the time. Um, yeah, I felt, I'll say this before I, I, I give you the, the, the opportunity to, to respond to that. I'll say that I felt the way that many men have talked to me about um, being in a relationship. I felt smothered and it, it almost felt like I couldn't breathe. So can you respond to that? I mean, is that something that you feel is necessary in a relationship? 
That is like level 10 stage <laughs> clinger. So no, I don't feel like that is something that's necessary. I think coming from a woman's perspective, well, my perspective, I can't speak for all women, but you come into a relationship with baggage okay. and some emotional things that happen that could be triggers that, oh no, this person, my ex used to say this, so is this person the same? So until you get past that bridge of, it's a new slate. It's not the same person, mm-hmm. but that's a lot of communicating. That's getting over those hurdles and being willing to figure out what it is that makes you want to be everywhere with this person. Me as an individual, it's nice to be invited. Do I want to go all the time? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> sorry, like, but sometimes it is nice to be invited, especially if like in my situation, like moving from a whole different environment into a new one and not really knowing anybody in the area. Okay. If you're always going out and they're bringing their girlfriends or their wives, like, yeah, I want to come. Yes, I want to get to know, you know, other people in your circle so that I could, you know, create my own village or whatever. Right. But to be every single lockstep, no, I don't, I don't feel like that's necessary. Okay. Because. I'm the same person at the end of the day. Like I like to cuddle, but I'm going to need you to go on your side of the bed. I'm going to go on mine. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I agree with that. I think, um, and you know, of course we're going to get into this a little bit deeper, but I think a lot of what happens in relationships is, as you mentioned, this baggage that's brought from prior relationships, um, upbringing, um, you know, different situations that cause us to act the way that we do. But a lot of that, um, to me, revolves around a lack of trust. Um, because I don't fully trust you, I need to know everything that you're doing. And I need to be involved in everything that you're doing. Because I don't trust that you're going to do the right thing by our relationship if I'm not involved. And for me, to me, that is a, first off, it's a non-starter. I can't function in that environment. Um, but to add to that, if you put someone in a situation where they feel, um, smothered in that way, you're going to stifle that relationship. In other words, just as I mentioned that term of smothering, you're going to kill the relationship because it doesn't allow, first off, the, um, the level of trust to be extended. Um, it doesn't allow growth. Um, between the two partners. But on top of that, it makes the person who is on the receiving end of that feel as if their their opinion doesn't matter, so to speak. Um, that you know their ability to be able to interact in a independent manner is is taken away from them. So it's almost like I'm losing something by going into this relationship. So from what I've been, you know, told by male friends and some um, some males that I've coached and some females as well, you know, it makes me not want to be in a relationship. If this is what it's going to be, I'm good. I don't need to have a relationship. Um, and I will tell you that a lot of men fear that. And that's the reason why they don't go further with uh, relationships. They don't go into the level of the monogamous part of it or even think about the marriage part because they're so afraid that they're going to lose their freedom, so to speak. They're going to lose. And I mean, that's even, that's borne out in, you know, sitcoms and stuff. When they talk about marriage, you know, they talk about a ball and chain. They talk about losing your freedom. And I think that that, you know, that starts from this independence factor that is potentially lost. Now, with that being said, I do understand that there is a time and a place for us to be together. And yes, there should be a bridging of actions and functions where we come together, where more time than not, yeah, we are together. We are doing things together. We're sharing our friends, we're sharing our experiences, everything else. But I still think that there needs to be some space that's you know left aside for each indiv- uh, individual to enjoy their individual time. What do you think? Mm-hmm. No, I agree with that. I mean, because at the end of the day, those are still your friends and they're still my friends. So the loyalty is going to be there. Right. So you don't want to like have this barrage of like, oh, now you're my friend too. Like, <laughs> <"All right." laughs> I just think when you get into a relationship, you have to 
you don't have to change your whole entire life around to cater to this person's needs, okay. but relationships are all about considering another human being feeling. Mm. So it's not just about you. So if you're used to going out to bars every night with your homeboys, just to chop it up after, that's how you wind down after work. Right. Okay, do that. Because if I'm coming into this knowing it, I know that that's your thing and I'm not trying to change you. Right. But I think there's like a twist of, yeah, do that, but come home at nine o'clock or seven o'clock instead of midnight, 2 a.m. Like right. there's things that need to be adjusted when you're considering someone else's feelings. And if you don't want to consider someone else's feelings, then stay people. Yeah. <laughs> stay on that path. Yeah. Yeah. I th- at the same time, too, you talked about, um, you know, being smothered and things like that if you come into it with baggage and i know that i have my insecurities and things that i'm you know still dealing with and working through from you know my ex-husband but there's also a point where yes you give somebody a clean slate but if they lie about the hangouts or what they're doing i think that's when some things come into play like why am i not invited Uh what are you really doing but only after you allowed that lie to creep in. So then again, it takes that communication to get over that hump or hurdle or whatever happened to repair so that it's a healthy, like, yeah, do your thing. I'm going to be over here doing mine. Right, right. I think to that point, um, a large part of what needs to take place, and this isn't in any relationship. This is something I talk about at the end of every episode of the podcast, communication. We have to communicate um, throughout our relationship, but in the beginning, it's so paramount that you share with your significant other some of the things that you know may be on your mind in regards to y'all's relationship. So that <laughs> wait a minute, you smiled and laughing. What do you got? Because I'm the nothing girl. I'll be like, what's wrong? I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, I know three, that girl. Three minutes later, I just find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to start dropping the hints, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working on Good. it. Good. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Good. Because I do know you to be the nothing girl. Um, and I think that that communication aspect is such a huge part of any healthy relationship. Um, one of the things that I, you know, uh, continually try to preface when I'm doing a relationship coaching session is the fact that we have to communicate with each other, both the good and the bad, because if we don't, there's no opportunity to fix what's bad, as well as there's no opportunity to enjoy what's good. So by communicating with our significant other, it gives us an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? I didn't know you felt that way. You know, I had no idea that this bothered you. I didn't know that when I did this, you thought that. You know what I mean? So I think that that communication aspect is so huge. But I wanted to go into a different area of independence. I wanted to talk about um, finances. What are your feelings in regards to? Because I've also, you know, had situations where I've talked with people um, who have had problems in their relationship because they felt that they should be you know, a part of the other person's financial picture to the degree that, you know, we now are together. We've been together for a year or whatever. I need to be on your bank accounts. I need to be, you know, um, um, I need to be a part of everything that you have financially going on. And if not, then once again, what are you hiding? Why can't I be a part of that? Why am I not on your checking account? What do you think? So I have only shared a bank account with two individuals in my whole entire life. Okay. My mother, when I was a child, because I had my bank account at nine, so she had to be on Okay. She got off when I turned 18, and I started my son's bank account when he was three. Okay. So so that's it. I, I just don't think it's necessary and... Maybe it's my own personal upbringing okay. and my parents, you know, one of my parents had a gambling problem. So to see all of that happen and go back and forth and not trust what the other was going to do. Absolutely. Not. Okay. We're going to have a conversation. I'm, I don't need you to say, oh, you've been to Target four times this month. Yes. And right. like if I need some feminine IG products or if I forget the deodorant, I'm going to Target. That is my happy place. Right. I will walk around the miles for hours, but I don't need you on me for that. I think it's going back to your point, communication. We can have a threshold. Like if anything over 500, anything over a thousand, 
ask the other person if other things need taken care of in the home right. before you spend it. But then you have yours, I have mine. We communicate on what is who's paying what, and it shouldn't be a problem. Like I don't, I don't want to have a joint bank uh-huh. account. I just don't. Okay. okay. And I have nothing to hide. I'm not doing anything wrong. I just I've worked hard. You've worked hard. If you want to go out and spend money to have dinner with your friends or whatever, or I don't want to see all that. Okay. So um, I had, I, I'm, I'm going to throw something at you. I, I had someone who was having some trouble in their relationship that I was coaching who said, said to me in response to their spouse, not wanting them on their bank accounts. They said to me that, you know, one of the reasons why I feel that we should share bank accounts is because we can pool our money together. Um, you know, we can get, <laughs> look at your face. We can get, a, <laughs> we can get, you know, um, you know, because we're sharing accounts, we can actually benefit in, 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 in a higher way in terms of, you know, the interest that we're getting on the, on, on the money, so on, so on and so forth. Um, but more than anything, I want to know that we are holistically together and, you know, by having these separate accounts, to me, that separates us and it, 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 it puts us in a place where, yeah, I want to be with you, but not fully. What do you think about that? I feel like people need to do what works for them. Okay. And if that conversation worked for her significant other or his significant other, and they got to a place where they felt like, I see where you're coming mm-hmm. from, do your thing. For me, it would take, I don't even know what it would take. For somebody <laughs> to convince me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. I need to be on your account. Like, no. <laughs> and again, I know where it stems okay. from. It has nothing to do with anybody ever stealing from me or me making a wrong investment. It really is watching my parents argue about money. Yeah. I don't want to argue about that. Yeah, it's funny you mention that. Um, the the highest percentage of um, divorce is a result of financial um, uh, arguments, financial concerns. Most divorces mm-hmm. end because there are complaints about you spent too much money on this or why did you spend money here and so on and so forth. I think to your point earlier, if we are in a, a committed monogamous relationship and we are sharing bills or mortgage or rent, as long as, you know, we understand back to the communication, as long as we understand that you're responsible for X, Y, and Z, I'm responsible for A, B, and C. And those things happen harmoniously. It should not be a need for us to necessarily have to join our accounts together. Um, I guess, from the perspective of someone who um, has who has had their own financial situation to themselves pretty much their entire life, the the concern that I have is, and I mean I don't want to necessarily think negative, but what if something were to happen in our relationship? How will that affect me in terms of you being on my account? Because I don't know if most people know this, but once you once you have someone on your account. It's almost impossible to get them off. Um, you can't just say, you know, I want. They have to sign. exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, you, you can't just say to the bank, I want, you know, I want um, Susie Q off my account now. No, no, it doesn't work that way, sir. This account um, actually includes the two of you. There was documentation that was signed. This is legal. We can't just undo it that way. So now you have a big, bigger problem because now, you know, for whatever reason, you want to change the situation, and it's not that easy. So either you have to close out that account, um, which, you know, I guess it, it, it isn't that difficult, but why why put yourself in that situation where you're going through all of those trials and tribulations over something as as, as simple as money you know, um, and, and, and something that can be discussed, you know, prior to, so that, we're not, so that we're not in that situation, so that we're not having to worry about, you know, us going our, our separate ways over a financial argument or something. Yeah, I'm allergic. I <laughs> <laughs> but let that water bill or something not be paid, and that was your responsibility. <laughs> like, yeah, no. Okay, so to basically summarize my concerns around this whole independence thing and and the independence of 
uh, people in relationships. I would say the main factor, the main factor is communication. Um, making sure that we're both on the same page prior to, uh, in my opinion, part of the whole um, dating slash courting stage, I'm, I'm talking old school courting, but the, the whole courting stage is getting to know the person that you hopefully intend on spending the rest of your life with. And what that means is communicating, talking about these things, sharing, you know, uh, some of your concerns about things like finances, so on and so forth. But there's something else, too, that plays into the independence thing um, that can make it uh, more difficult or not. And that's trust. You have to trust the person that you that you're involved with. If there's a situation where you're reasoning behind wanting to know every friend that I have, every really, you know, every relationship that I'm involved with is because you don't trust me. Then why are we in this relationship? What are we doing here? I mean, I don't know what you Bree, but if I'm in a situation where I don't trust you, so I have to look behind what you're doing, I don't want to be with you. That's just too much work. As well as that to me goes strictly, it goes holistically against the whole reason why I'm getting together with you. I'm, I'm getting together with you because I do trust that you will do the right thing. I do trust that you love me and I do trust that you respect and value our relationship. So if those things aren't true, then why am I wasting my time doing this? What do you think? So I think trust is earned. Okay. I, and maybe this is how I view it because I just don't trust everybody. Off right. There are certain things and signs or actions that I'm like, okay, I could see myself, you know, going down this path. But, you know, trust can be broken in relationships, sure. especially long-term ones. It's just how about you back communication, talk through it to gain it back. Mm. Or, you know, I, like I said, I am the nothing girl. Yeah. <laughs> I won't really tell you what's on my mind. I'll just shut down. So maybe that person doesn't trust me because it's like, here you go again, shut it down. How do I know you're not just about to, you know, right. peace out on this. So trust is something that you have to earn. And then continue to like to show that you're this person. Okay. Okay. The last um, piece, I guess, of, of it is the respect, the respect of the relationship. In other words, respecting me for what, you know, and, and who I am and me doing the same for you. If I don't respect the fact that um, these relationships or friendships that you built over, over a long period of time are just that, um, then how can I expect, you know, for you to respect our relationship long term? Um, I feel like. So let's be clear. Are you talking about relationships of the opposite sex? And that's a good point. I'm glad you worked it up because that, that's something else that, that can definitely play into this. So, so just to, <laughs> just to put it on, on the table. Let's talk about if we were, you know, dealing with someone of an opposite sex um, and we were heterosexual, just to say for argument's sake, um, would that change the dynamic of the independence that you would grant that person? I think it depends on how you communicate that. Okay. Like, in there's boundaries. As a friend, you respect the fact that somebody else is in a committed relationship. And that you can't, like for you, we've been friends for over a decade yeah. and you're married. Yeah. I would never call you at midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Like that's rude and disrespectful. Right. And your wife would probably be outside <laughs> of the house. Like, <laughs> man. Okay. But the fact that we have those boundaries, she knows who I am. We've spoken before. I've met her. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like she needed to meet me every single time. Right. We establish that level of respect and boundaries to where she knows I know my place. Okay. I am your friend. And if at any time our friendship was damaging anything that you had going on in your marriage, yeah. as a friend, I'm backing away. Yeah. Like, no, work on that. Do your thing. Let me know when it's good. Yeah. I think sometimes, and maybe women are catty of nature. Okay. Like, we're just catty individuals. But there are times where there are some women out there that they're like, and I've been here. I'm about to, 
and they don't have those boundaries. Yeah. So then now, as the wife or girlfriend, you're like trying to show this person that you just met, you're dating or whatever, that their friend of 10 years, 20 years is this other way, it's hard to swallow. Yeah. And you put them in an uncomfortable situation. So I feel like there should be boundaries from you and your significant other, but also being the friend. If you are that mm-hmm. friend that somebody feels uncomfortable about, just back off for a little bit. So like, based- like respect the space and let them thrive. Like I'm not saying that the insecurities and all that should take over. Yeah. And that that person should win, but it's a conversation. And it's definitely, like you said, communication. And the one thing that I think would change the dynamic of understanding what that is, is if you lied about what that friend and you have done. Okay. Like if it's just a friendship, cool. I have guy friends. I have you. You know what I mean? But we've never crossed any lines. But if you have a friend and you've been intimate, you should, you should say that up front. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, so back to that point, in other words, you mentioned it, um, uh, when you were talking just now, is that respect to be able to respect the boundaries of what's going on within, you know, that romantic relationship, understanding that, look, you know, I know that, you know, we're having lunch. However, I respect your marriage or your relationship to, to, to the degree that I would never want to bring negativity or anything that could harm that relationship. So as I see it, um, you know, just to summarize the three things that um, would have to be in check or have to be in order for this independence to occur. Um, the first one being communication, second one being trust, the third one being respect. Did I miss anything with that, Bree? Is there anything else that you think would be an important aspect to consider when it when it comes to independence in a relationship? Yeah, if you're really just trying to be in a relationship, then you have to consider the other person. Okay. Period. And if you don't want to consider another human's feelings, then you should be single. Good point. Very good point. All right. So with that being said, um, I definitely want to reach out to those who think that they may need some assistance in their relationship. Um, as it, as it relates to not only this aspect, but any aspect um, of a relationship um, concern and uh, let you know that I'm available to assist you with that. Uh, you can reach me by several different um, means. One, the first one would be primarily um, Instagram, believe it or not. You can find me on Instagram. Um, again, my Instagram um, handle is uh, relationships underscore situations underscore podcast. The next way would be um, maybe on Facebook um, at relationship. Uh, I'm sorry, relatable situations, and um, also you can reach me by email. The email is faceitnc at yahoo.com. That's again face f a c e n c at yahoo.com, and um, yeah. Bree, I got to tell you, this is the first time that you and I have been on a, on a podcast episode together. I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, you are the first person um, that I've done the video podcast with, which was a big move for me because you know Bree and others who know me personally know that I have real issues about my face and everything else um, being being shown. But um, I got to tell you, you made this thing so enjoyable that I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, more than likely, I'm going to drag you, I mean, ask you to come back <laughs> and do another one um, because I really, really enjoy your perspective. And I think that we um, were able to cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. And hopefully this uh, will help someone who has gone through this issue or has thought about this as a as a problem um, or a concern in their relationship. Do you have any closing or parting words, Bree, before we close out? Oh, I'm happy to help. Just don't send me the invoice for all my coaching. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we are friends, and that will never ever happen. Um, but I want I want those who are either viewing or listening to this, please think about you know things that you can do in your own relationship to um, help with the independence in that relationship. Because I promise you, 
once you have come to a place where you understand that there needs to be a certain level of independence in your relationship, your relationship will deepen and flourish because it'll show the other person that level of trust and concern and care that they need. So with that being said, I will close out the way that I always do. Communicate, y'all. Thanks, Bree. <laughs> Is that the cool thing to do? I guess so, girl. I'm not cool, so I guess so. All right, thanks, Bree. I'm getting old, so. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>